Here we filled the selection with the red color. Let's say that we want to fill the selection with an image now, not a red color or whatever color. How can we do this? Let's open an image. Let's say this image. It can be any image you like. See what I'm going to do? There are many ways to do this, actually. This is the first one. Eventually, we'll see many other ways. The question now is how to get the selection from this, from the red. Because I want to use the selection here and then bring it over to the other image. So how can I get the selection of the red layer? Have the red colors selected. Yeah, no, here it's much easier to just select with the magic wand tool the red color because it's just one flat color. So just with the magic wand tool, click and select. And I want to move the selection but not the red color to the other image. So in this case, I will not use the move tool. I will just use a selection tool, any selection tool, and just drag it over to the other image. So now I have the selection on this new image. So what I'll do in this case is now use the move tool because I want the actual image to be taken to the other side, but just the selection. So I go with the move tool like this and there you have it as an image now and not as color. So you can select the red one and delete it or we're actually going to do something else with it. We're going to make the red one a shadow of the uh, pasta image. We want it to be black. Let's hide the pasta first. How can we turn the red to black? Many ways. The easiest is to actually click on the paint bucket, select black, and fill it up. It will fill up the colors that you click on depending on the tolerance value, like we saw before with the tolerance on the selection. Because it's just one color now, it will just fill up um, the color that I clicked on. So anyway, now I'll select the pasta. I'll zoom over Control Plus. I would select this rectangular selection, call it Shadows, for example, or Shadow. And I call this pasta because I got it from the pasta image. Now I want the shadow to be uh, blurry. It shouldn't be so sharp. It can be sharp, but in this case, I want it to be blurry. So I go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. It's too much, of course, so I'll reduce um, the radius. They say to something like 4. I'll press OK. I'll zoom out. All right, so I have a nice shadow, but it's too uh, strong. So I'll go to my opacity and decrease the opacity of the shadow. So now it's much softer. All right, and I want to type. Uh, some text because we're going to be working on uh, also text for our project. So I'll click on T and type, for example, um, I don't know, just pasta. Now I want to make my, you can move the text, I want to make it bigger. So uh, one way is to press Control T and just to scale it up like this, press Enter. Now remember that the shadow layer is below the pasta layer. Because if it was above, it will actually hide it instead of be below it. So it has to be below the pasta. And the text, normally, I'll put it at the very top. You can change the font by going to T and clicking here and choosing whichever font you like. In my case, I chose Trebuchet MS. So if I want to use, see this in full screen, I'll press FF tab and there is my work.